Hey guys, I'm back. Uh, been a while since I've had a chance to post anything really where I'm speaking other than you know, like some previews. I've been just insanely busy between new designs. Um, went to Adepticon this year, spent four days explaining stuff. Um, been playing some games, ended up starting to get into Dreadball. Um, you know, just been, well, busy. So rather than me getting caught up on stuff, I'm just going to quickly blast through everything that you see on this table and we'll take it from there. So hopefully this will all work. Okay, so let me see if I can aim the camera down a little and zoom in. Okay, what these are are some um, defense walls that I ended up doing. These were designed after um, Halo where they have that shield that they have where they the guys run forward they toss down a shield and magically it just pops up in front of them so that's what these were designed after so I went with just a simple design so that if I needed to I could pretty much build oops let's move this one there move that one on there but you could build whatever shapes you're needing these are actually sized the same as the GW Aegis line so one two three yeah left one out yeah We'll put that one there. Why not? These are sized to be the same length as the Aegis. So, and of course I did that whole thing off-center. That's okay. They're that way if you were using them in 40K, you can. The other laser defense wall that I did um, wasn't designed with 40K in mind. It wasn't designed as an Aegis replacement. It was actually designed as a perimeter wall for a larger piece that I was working on. So its sizes didn't match up, and I kept getting emails from people saying, when are you going to do something that matches up to the ages? When are you going to do something that matches up to the ages? Well, seeing how redesigning that other one doesn't do me any good, I figured I'd do something a little bit different. So that's where this one came out of. Um, the walls are actually a little bit taller than the ages, but I figured being Tau and one of the big things in sci-fi is that your shields magically only, only allow stuff to pass through in one direction. I mean, if you look at Star Trek, you look at any of the sci-fi out there, they don't have to lower their shields to fire. So that was the idea with this. I figure the Tau would have some technology that would let them, or the Necrons even, would have some technology that would let them say, hey, the shield is literally smart enough to know when you're firing through it, so for that nanosecond that it needs to, it'll lower itself and allow things to pass through, or they're tuned to a specific frequency or something silly along those lines. Who knows, it's sci-fi, you can get away with almost anything. So, that's those. Next up was a bunch of just general... And I can't zoom that in anymore, so I'm going to move the whole thing forward slightly. Ooh. And we'll come down. We're just some general gaming accessories. So I ended up um, doing kind of a combo template. This came out of, I sat down for a game of 40K and forgot my templates. So the next day I said, well, let me make my own that way. I won't ever lose them again. So I actually ended up cutting up a bunch of these. But it's got, so you've got your standard teardrop flame shape. And you have your small ring, which is the inner one, and then your larger ring on the outer one. Um, and of course, seeing how I was doing templates, I decided to do me a, a ruler. So this has got one inch, two inch, four inch, and six inch spacing, so I can move it, move it around and do all the different measuring that I need. Um, next up were these little guys, which what this is is a base that allows you because a lot of times you'll use like a die or something to keep track of the wounds on a model. Um, this way it makes it a little bit easier. You're not having to move the little globs around or have that model that starts, you know, like round or turn one. You shoot a model, he's down to like one hit left and magically on turn four, as he walks across the board, he's back at full health. And it's because somebody accidentally picked up a wrong die. So with these, what I did is I did them in a bunch of different sizes and basically your model's base just fits in a little die so that when you're moving them around it moves with them and you don't really worry about it. Those I did, I, I pretty much did every size possible. So these are like this is a 25 and then I did 40, I did 60s, I did 80s. The 80s and like ovals have two dice locations so if you do have something that has more than six hits you can keep track of it as well. Um, and I even did bike ones for for bikes although the bike ones you're really not going to need too many of them on. Um, so that was those. And they fit different style, different size bases. So, for example, did them in different sizes. So this is actually a this is another 40 mil base, but I also did them in 30 mil. I did them for the the lip bases, just 
any shape possible. So that's all of those. Next up were six millimeter buildings are still going um, and actually they've that project has really been kicked into overdrive with the launch of the Robotech game. Seeing how the Robotech miniatures game is moving forward. Um, I got it on the Kickstarter day one of it <laughs> and I've pretty much lost my mind. Uh, so <laughs> because of that I'm really getting heavy into the six millimeter building so that's the, the scale that they're doing. So I've started to do some more unique designs. This one for example, this is one of the prototypes, but when I do the final of it, it's actually going to be in like a mirrored acrylic so that you get that kind of downtown office structure type setup. And with it being all acrylic, I left the bottom of it open so that if I wanted to I could actually light the model. Um, so I could backlight this one if I really needed to. But that was kind of one design that I was playing with. And they're nice tall buildings. I hate seeing in like the Battletech tables or any of the 6 mil tables where everything is really, really low. Um, I'm here in Chicago. We have skyscrapers. So there are no short buildings in Chicago. So this kind of matches up with that. This one I did something really neat with though. This one what I did, this one I actually designed um, with lighting in mind. There's a company that was doing a kick, Kickstarter called um, Powered Play, which are doing light up extras for your models. So if you're wanting to light up any of your tanks and those sorts of things, um, they sell pre-done lighting kits, which are really cool. This building was actually designed with those kits in mind, in that when I designed it, I included spacing, whoops, there we go, included spaces in it that you could actually mount your, um, your LEDs, so that when you do the building, it actually lights up the different levels. Um, so it kind of gives you something a little bit different. This one, there's actually an inner, down here at the bottom, there's an inner set of acrylic that goes in there as well. So that way when you put the battery in it, you don't even see the battery. But this is just one of the six millimeter buildings. And again, it's another nice big building. Um, I figure if you're gonna do them, you might as well make them big. Okay, and now I have like three minutes left to do the last big project. So let me zoom back out and move the camera. Whoa, a lot of stuff here. Last big project is this one. This one you guys have seen bits and pieces of before. Well, it's actually, there we go, it's actually done. There are still a few minor things that I'm going to be adding to it, but the core set is done. What this is, is the elevated walkway project I was working on, the Skyway system. Um, the whole idea with it was to eliminate the stadium effect that you get with moat tables where you have all this really really tall terrain around the outer edges and then you have this big open dance floor in the middle kind of like a stadium. With this it's designed to take up a lot more table space number one. Number two you still have a lot of movement but the big thing is it's all open at the bottom so the only way you're getting cover is to actually move into the terrain so now it becomes less of a battle like in 40k the big thing is I mean Whoever has the most dice, whoever rolls the most dice, essentially wins. Um, there's not as much tactical movement required. With something like this, it does require you to move a lot more tactically. So you're now having to think. It's like, okay, I have to move into the terrain to fight this battle. I can't just stand here and take pot shots and pray. Um, as well as with flyers taking over, it gives you a lot of things where it's like, okay, if you want to get away from the flyers, fine, hide under something. Good news. The bad news is you're in the open from other stuff. So you have to kind of plan your moves a little bit more. So that's really where this one is. This one is going to be my first Kickstarter project. That's right, I am actually doing a Kickstarter. Um, this set, because of the number of pieces and how many pieces you need for it to really build out a table and build out different things, there's just no way I can put it on the, on the site and have people be able to buy it at a reasonable price without me going down that route. So this one will be part of a Kickstarter that I'm doing. Um, I'm not going to go into heavy detail here, but as I said, this is a pretty big set. Let me move this a little closer so you can get an idea of what some of the pieces are. So we have things like an elevator system, um, of course the road deck systems, uh, uh, let's see what, at corner pieces, there's apartment complex pieces that'll fit in. Whoops, move this across. Gotta love when the tripod gets stuck. Um, so there are apartment complex pieces, and these reuse the same apartment complex setup from the other 
sets that I've done, so you can actually still combine the different sets if you wanted to. I mean, there's stairway systems where, and everything's going to be, the entire set is as it is now. There's going to be a few minor texturing changes, but they're all fully textured so that when you go to paint them, all your details will pop out. You don't have to be a master level painter to get a good looking, a good looking set with it. So that's kind of the quickie preview on this. There are more, there is more stuff that I'm going to be doing, but this kind of gives you the, the quick 10 minute rundown. So I'll talk to you guys later because I've run out of time on this one. Take it easy.